What's up everybody? I'm back with another movie review and today I am reviewing Iron Man 2. Uh, this movie came out, I don't know exactly when it came out, 2010 I want to say. Um, it could have been a little bit, it could have been 09, might have been 20, I don't think it's 2011 though. I think it was two, at least either 09 or 010, I don't remember. But but yeah, it's the second movie on Iron Man. It's uh, after he's already, you know, been the big hero of the world. He's revealed to be Iron Man. Um, and, you know, he's now, there's the longest period of world peace. Um, no crime whatsoever or anything. And uh, let me see, that was not the case. Went to shit. Um, so let's jump right into the review. This is another, there's another really nice big jab on politics in this movie about how, you know, they want to create weapons and they're not being used and um, how, like, the military's not being used and there's they want to make some money and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty prevalent throughout the movie, um, so it's uh, another great jab on politics, I guess. Uh, but it was cool to see. This movie, though, has an insane cast. You got Tony Stark, and I forgot to mention her at all in the last movie review. Gwyneth Paltrow is a big part in the Iron Man movies as well, and that's pretty insane. Because uh, I always just knew Gwyneth Paltrow from from Goop, um, her her stint with Goop. If you don't know what Goop is, go watch John Tron's video on it. That's probably your best way to research it, or you can watch it on Netflix, I guess, if it's still there. But um, but prior to that, she was on uh, Iron Man. Now I can't. I can't take her seriously knowing that what she would do years later, but there you go, I guess. Um, she's She plays another big prevalent role in this movie. Scarlett Johansson's in this movie, too, um, as Black Widow. She oh, She's in this movie a bunch. Um, and then also, probably the wildest cast addition was Elon Musk. Um, he only appears just a little, for a little split second at the Monaco race um, as, as like a side, not even really a side character. She's like, Mr. Musk shakes hand that's literally all he's in the movie for pretty much it, it's that's crazy that they're really a freaking elon musk in this movie um but yeah just a wild cast lineup this movie gave me the craziest f1 race i've ever seen as well of course there's a big part with it that the monaco race and tony stark drives the car that's illegal by the way i don't think that could ever actually happen um but okay, um, you know it's a crazy race with the guy, and then we see the end of the main villain come along. Come along, well, one of the main villains come along and starts slashing these cars up, and they're flipping everywhere, and um, and there's a big fight scene and whatnot. So uh, it was a crazy race. I'm, I mean, it's funny because we just we watched it just a few days after the Monaco race actually happened, and I watched that, and that was a boring ass fucking race. Why can't we get more Monaco races like this? I don't know. But um, that was a really good scene all overall, though, as well. It was pretty good. So, Sorry, let me... Um, I like the, the cinematics in this movie were good, again, as they usually are. Um, as they were in the first movie, they are in this movie. Um, one particular scene that I really liked was the fight scene between Don Cheadle and Iron Man. When Don Cheadle uh, steals the proto prototype esque suit before it gets like colored, um, and fights Iron Man with it and gets away with it, I thought that was pretty cool. The music did a good job of, of setting the mood for the scene as well, so that was really good stuff. Um, I really liked it. Let's talk about the uh, let's let's talk about the main the uh, antagonists of this movie again. Um, so there's like I said, there's two antagonists. One is established pretty early on, like we know he's going to be an antagonist. His dad dies, and he wants to carry on his dad's plans of, of getting the suit and um, like having his own suit and whatnot. Uh, he's like in a drunken rage, and he comes to the U.S. But then the other guy is one of like a, a business guy for the military as well. Um, he recruits the other guy, his name's Ivan. Ivan's the one we meet at the beginning of the movie, and the other, I don't remember who the other guy's name is, but. Works for the military, kind of. And then he, they help build the suits, and then uh, they turn on each other. This, the, that fucking guy is a douche. He is much more stupid than the last movie's antagonist. Um, 
not Ivan, the other guy I'm talking about. Um, and he's just as easy to decipher very early on in the movie. I mean, we start at the beginning of the movie, we literally have a scene where they, they're talking about in the Senate. And this is another th- jab on politics. The senators are really, really unlikable here um, because they keep siding with this guy just because he's in the military and the s- government hates Tony Stark. Um, but, like, we get, like, he, like, they literally show footage of him, like, ambassading, like, people in the Middle East with new weapons and whatnot. And, 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 and like, we can, they, they can tell that he's a rival of Tony Stark's right away, meaning probably going to be an antagonist and there's not really much that they could do there to make it a bigger plot twist later on when we do find out that he's actually the antagonist when it's like really revealed that he is and what he's up to but you couldn't have been but like i mean they could have approached it a different way i don't think they really would have done anything but you know it was it worked again like i said in the last movie it works out fine but here it's just much more stupid. It's much worsely somehow even less likely of a care like or likable of a character than uh, the other guy, which is weird. But another thing I didn't really like about this movie: the suits abilities, in my opinion, um, really weren't fully utilized with the semantics of the film. Uh, most of the time, we just see Iron Man flying around. Um, <clears throat> getting other guys to getting the enemies to crash into stuff. Um, we get like, you know, it's a lot of the flying around, launching explosives and kind of th- stuff like that. I don't know. I'd, I mean, we get to see some cool stuff like when they join forces with the the beams and whatnot, and then boom, it blows up and kills the guy and vaporizes him and whatnot. But it feels like, like in my opinion, it just feels like they. Did could have done more with the suits like abilities, and I get you know there's a, there's another Iron Man movie after this, and he's in the, the Avengers stuff, so I get there's more opportunities, but it would have been nicer to see. Um, but again, you know, the suits the suits are always evolving and whatnot, so there's that as well. Um, so maybe we'll get to see that a little bit later on in some of the other movies, but I don't know. I just wish we got to see a little bit more of that. Well, that's it for all the notes I had. Overall, this wasn't as good of a movie, in my opinion, as the first one. Sequels are usually not as not as good or better than the first one, so they're usually worse. So, there you go, at least. Um, my thoughts, though, for my final score of Iron Man 2, I'll probably have to give it a good 6 out of 10. It wasn't horrendously bad. The char- thought of the characters were not great, but um, it was still pretty good I'm still not horrible overall um but uh, just not bad so that's gonna do it for this movie review if you've ever seen Iron Man 2 I'd like to know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below and that's gonna do it for this video stay tuned for much more amazing content until next time I will see you guys later goodbye